Is AGI here? What is AGI? It's artificial general intelligence. So artificial general intelligence is the ability for AI to do work better than humans. So this article is Reddit strikes AI content deal with Google ahead of IPO, sources oh. say. This is from fastcompany.com and the article title is What is a Cosmic Reality Engineer? Amazon's new report on AI jobs offers a window into the future of work. You're listening to Future Tense, the AI show that demystifies the world of artificial intelligence and tells you what you need to know. Join Jeff Joyce and Julia McCoy live right now. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Future Tense. I'm Jeff Joyce. And I'm Julia McCoy. We are so excited to have you here today. We have some really cool stuff to share with you, starting with AGI. Uh, we have some breakthroughs as far as nuclear fusion with a a using AI, uh, what some AI jobs the future might be, and much, much more. Uh, Julia, do you want to go ahead and get us started on AGI? Yes, yes. Well, just like you said, Jeff, there's so much to cover. And so something that Jeff and I do is we kind of debate, like, what should the hook be? And I can tell you, I think before last night at maybe 9 p.m., this was not going to be our hook. Here we are <laughs> with the hook design at 9 p.m. last night because we think it's that important. So the initial topic we have for you is, is AGI here? What is AGI? It's artificial general intelligence. Um, and before I go into some of the news headlines, Jeff, I'd love to hand it over to you to actually s explain the principles of the technology that would go into AGI. Would you do that for a, little, a few minutes? Absolutely. So artificial general intelligence is the ability for AI to do work better than humans. A lot of people think that AGI is when the AI has like its own conscience and can kind of think on, on it on its own. And um, yes, to an extent there is that, but it's more so, is it able to complete work better than a human? And in an automated way. That's what we think of in terms of AGI. Um, currently, right now, what we're seeing is that there's a lot of speculation of, is AGI here right now? And we've seen a lot of rumblings. I know last week, or was it the S, or, sorry, Tuesday, it feels like last week in AI yeah. years. Um, a... But uh, what we're seeing is that there's a lot of telltale signs that it seems like AGI is either here or almost here. I know, Julia, you have an article that you want to share. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. I have a couple. Yeah. So thanks for defining that, Jeff. I can always rely on you for the very accurate technical descriptions, which is why, like I've said, I will never host this myself. <laughs> if I'm <laughs> explaining things technically, it's not extreme. So, yeah, um, bringing up, you know, the clickbait, I think like we have this incorrect idea. Um, about what AI and AGI is. And the idea is kind of like, it's something that's been dropped out of the sky just on us, right? And so to combat that idea, I actually want to share a few articles, starting with one here on the New York Times uh, that talks about the history of NVIDIA. So if you haven't followed this, it's pretty amazing to see what Jensen Huang, the CEO and founder of NVIDIA has actually done. So he built one of the world's first supercomputers. And at a conference, that's when Elon Musk saw it. And NVIDIA now owns market share for AI chips. Over 70% of all AI chips are sold through NVIDIA's platform. So this article in particular is really interesting. Um, you might have seen it. It's making the all YouTube videos basically are featuring this article because it's talking about this idea of NVIDIA building a competitive moat. They own a lot of monopoly because of an accelerated invention that Jensen Huang basically did. He as a founder is incredibly brilliant. He built computers and he's the reason they are where they are. And it's funny because he founded this company in the nineties on a napkin with a friend. So the whole story is really cool. But what he did is he was talking in this article, he was interviewed, and what he was saying was it took $30 billion and 10 years to achieve the breakthrough that actually happened in 2012 through GPUs. What was that breakthrough? 
It was when GBUs achieved human-like accuracy in tasks, like recognizing a cat in an image, which was the precursor to what ChatGPT can do, generate, Dolly can do, generate images from text prompts. So that was a breakthrough that happened in 2012. And that breakthrough cost NVIDIA $30 billion in 10 years. So it is just simply not true that all of a sudden the robots are here and there is a level of living, breathing intelligence that could or could not be alien technology. This is AI and it's made possible through the innovation of computer chips that are now capable of handling what will be very soon AGI. Um, and so when we ask ourselves, what is AGI? I think Jeff described it really well. And if you think about it, it's just the simple matter in place and time of AI achieving human-like capability levels, if not greater than a human. And there are many charts and studies that show the acceleration of this. There's forecasts done that go into artificial superintelligence as well, which is another topic we can talk about. But something else that you don't see that you're going to see if you do, you know, your own due diligent research, or you just listen to us, <laughs> shameless plug, <laughs> is that OpenAI, their about page and their mission is now 100% bent on AGI. They used to not be this bent on this. It used to be all about the LLMs and developing large language models and chat GPT. But when custom GPTs came out, that's when they really focused on the future of AI benefiting humanity. And so if you scroll through their about page, it's very clear that their mission is AGI. That is their mission. And so we have Sam Altman out here, right? Asking for 8 trillion. I think he said what you saw it on X, Jeff, where he was like, F it, let's just go to eight. It used to be 7 trillion. <laughs> and this is the reason they do want to achieve AGI. So what's interesting is when you see models like Sora drop, which just happened, where we have this new text to video, and it's a world simulator, it's defying physics, it's basically recreating physics through artificial intelligence, they dropped this brand new model on us without a dev day, without a conference. And I hear like Sam Altman left in the middle of the press release because he had better things to do. <laughs> that tells me that to me is a telltale sign that OpenAI may have all of the pieces of AGI already in existence. Because why would you not plan a whole marketing campaign around something as amazing as Sora unless you had something better? And that's the thought I want to leave you with. It's like really critically look at all these things coming out. Don't read media headlines for yourself. And please like ditch the idea of Skynet and Terminator and all these ideas of a nefarious dystopian world through AI that is 100% fiction. And it's been placed in our minds by Hollywood. So you got to separate yourself from that as well. And look at this from, okay, we had 10 years of progress and $30 billion that allowed NVIDIA to achieve a new breakthrough in views, which is the reason we have ChatGPT. And now everything is accelerating so fast because we actually have computing power for it for the first time in history. Okay, so I want to end on these points and then give it back to Jeff with this article on The Guardian. And I think this article is the perfect example down to the author headshot <laughs> of a negative pundit in social media that just wants to create a negative headline. I'm going to break this down so you can see just how superficial it is to kind of live on this mountain and pick this kind of fight. Okay, so this comes from The Guardian. If you're not looking at our screen here, you're an audio listener. This comes from The Observer through The Guardian. And the author is John Nalton, who is a professor, right? So he's got some status and he's a writer for The Observer. So here's the headline. OpenAI boss Sam Altman wants seven trillion for all our sakes. Pray he doesn't get it. <laughs> and here's some of the content. The man behind ChatGPT is wooing the UAE to invest in energy-hungry AI, but if it turns out his tech can't fix the world, he's got an escape plan. 
Once upon a time, nobody outside tech circles had heard of Sam Altman. Mm. But then his company, OpenAI, launched ChatGPT, and suddenly he was everywhere, touring the world, giving interviews to gushing journalists. He was whiplash thin with a charmingly wide-eyed baby face. I don't know why the first paragraph dwells on his appearance, but it does. And then we go into, oh, and he was abruptly fired. Mm. This is so superficial. This article from the headline to the first paragraph dwelling has it on his appearance to that second paragraph that's talking about another news headline that wasn't even grounded in facts <laughs> um, because yes he was fired but it wasn't because he was nefarious or anything like that I mean okay we could go down another rabbit hole there. <laughs> I'm not saying he's not nefarious but to say that oh because he was fired you shouldn't take him seriously which this article goes on to imply is completely wrong and completely biased. So I think like this kind of shows what's wrong with the internet is this article in particular. And sadly, these articles get a ton of shares, right? They make it to your email inbox. They make it to the Facebook newsfeed because on average, the media gets two times more revenue for their advertising publishers if the news is negative. So that was a rabbit hole, but I wanted to point that out because you need to remember what AGI is. And once you're informed, I think it's so much easier to make a life decision on how you're going to adapt, what AI technology you're going to use, and how to look at this whole thing of the future of work and humanity changing forever because AI can now automate 99% of our work. So we need to look at this differently. We don't need to look at it like a Terminator Skynet thing. The question is, you know, who, which entity will gain power? That's another question and another concern. But that's the rabbit hole on AGI. Jeff, is there anything you would add? Absolutely. Um, so first off, that guy is completely just going off conjecture and just making stuff up. Like he's, he's not really like, he doesn't have an inside ear into it right? to be able to make those those uh, assessments, but I wanted to speak a little bit about why I think that we are probably close to AGI, but I don't believe it's here yet. And I'm gonna kind of break this down with a little image that I think will help explain it. Um, right here we have, and you should be able to see my screen now, is it's a, it's a Lego, it's a Lego man, and he has a full body, he has a head. And the way that I want to break this down is that all of the elements that we're seeing released right now, like if we thought about uh, the arms, the legs, the head, the torso, I want you to think of these as elements of creating like a, a person. This is like a, an autonomous person that's able to act and work on it on its own. So we have like on one hand, we have Sora. On the other hand, we have text generation. On the other hand, or on, our, on the legs, we have uh, AI agents, which are able to kind of provide direction and, and go places. We have all these things that are kind of making up um, the elements that it needs to kind of create action. But what we don't have yet is what I would like to call a governing AI. And this is, would be the head of what would be AGI. This would be the thing that would connect all those pieces together and really tell the rest of the body what to do it would tell it this is the where we want to go this is the task that need to be completed with that let's connect all that and let's make that action happen so we have some semblance of that with ChatGPT, where you can see you can type in the chat and it for instance can go to google and it can look for something and then return a result to you but what we don't have is multiple steps in that process and a complete governance over all of the mixture of agents or mixture of experts that are within these large language models. And so once we get to that point, we will see improvements in things like ChatGPT inside of other um, LLMs and they start to adopt this. But right now we don't have this head com complete. And so, yes, we were very, very close, I think, to AGI. I think that the elements are all there. We have the, we have the body parts ready to go but we just don't have that headpiece dialed in to where that is actually better than most humans, or at least on par. Once that reasoning is there and it's able to think in a way that a human wants to complete a task, 
then we will have AGI. That is such a well put explanation. And I see the logic of that. And it's interesting because the articles that you see on like actual research sites and what over 2000 AI experts have said the same thing. It's like that level of reasoning. It isn't there yet. Mm -hmm. That's what they're seeing. So if we look at this, you know, without any speculation at all, right, I think that is the absolute spot on conclusion. Um, you know, over here in one of my other tabs, Jeff, I do have a Reddit thread. <laughs> oh, let, let's go into that. Then let's get into something else about Reddit. <laughs> and didn't you just tell me that Google is now training on Reddit? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Google is indeed. Uh, so they made a deal. And I, I have strong opinions on this. Um, I like Reddit. I think Reddit is a is a good platform. The, the problem is, is that you get a lot of bias on Reddit. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I see you're, you're sharing a, uh, an article there on Reddit. Yes. I mean, this is a good example of the bias you just mentioned. So four months ago, this was posted, this thread was posted with the statement, not a question, a statement, artificial general intelligence is already here. So that's what this Reddit user believed four months ago. And then you go on, you see over 400 comments, 300 upshares. So it's been upvotes. It's been going around quite a bit. Um, you see people talking about ideas. Um, Jeff, are you familiar with this term? Colonial AI, colonial AI? Uh, I am not. How can we that have general just be... AI without? Oh, it, it, it's like, it, it's military, I think. It's what they're going for. <laughs> like a general AI, but then like oh, without a, a colonel. colonel. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, yeah, leave it to Redditors to do something like that. That makes yeah. sense. So it's interesting because there is, you know, a lot of speculation and something I've been kind of falling into for sure is some of the YouTubers rabbit holes where there's a user on X called Jimmy Apples. And he is supposedly somebody that works at OpenAI and can leak information. I don't really believe that. I <laughs> I think it's a figure set up to guide us a certain way. And who governs that figure is up for debate. Um, but this character on X has been actually leaking things before they come out, but it's very, very cryptic. So you don't actually get like the real definition. Have you come across Jenny, Jimmy Apples at all, Jeff? I have. Yeah. I think a, a lot of that is like one, it's very vague. This is just my, my personal opinion on it. I, I, I think that it, a lot of things that he puts out are very vague and they, they do end up having some connection to things that happen, especially open AI. Um, but it's not one for one speak. It's like, it's not he's saying this is going to happen and then it actually happens. It's like very vague terminology to then like something similar kind of happens. Um, but yeah, it, 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 I'm interested to see how far in advance, like he actually put something out and it's like, oh, this is actually came true. Like exactly how he said it was. Um, yeah. I believe he made some, some information or put out something about AGI as well. Yes. Yes, he did. But like you said, it's hard to match that to what happens because it's so, mm, what's actually happening here? So if you scroll through these Reddit comments, it's interesting because a lot of people are like, oh, it's already here. And they act like that should go without saying to the point where somebody said, I've already been saying this to everyone. It's maddening. They're in complete denial. And then the person replies, another Redditor, I've been going to a nearby Walmart parking lot and screaming it at people passing by, but they all look at me like I'm crazy. They're all fools. <laughs> <laughs> Can you picture that? He's going to I can, Walmart yeah. screaming, AGI is here. I think that's a that's a podcast episode right there where we go to Walmart and just <laughs> you oh, think dear. AGI is here? What are what are your thoughts? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, that's a perfect setting for that. Uh, yeah, it's, true. it's true. And then we have we've got this comment, which I could actually see something like this potentially being true. Now again, you got to remember all this is speculation. But somebody says the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office is rumored to have an AI called Sentinel 
that they use for real-time intelligence gathering and analysis. Point being, it's likely governments already have AIs that are far more complex than what the public sees. I agree with that. I think that there's a lot of, they're calling it basement AGIs, where there are AGIs that could potentially be all assembled. But like you said earlier, Jeff, they might just not have the governing head or it might be they even have the governing head and it's just not economically viable because there's not enough computing power and chip power. Hence the reason I think Sam Altman is seeking $8 trillion. But, you know, I, it's like, what are they holding back from the public that might already be here? That's an interesting question to debate. Yeah, I think that you hit the nail on the head right there. I think that the the reason why they're trying to get so much funding is because it is very costly to run an AGI. So you think about what an AGI has to do, it has to do a ton of reasoning, and then it has to actually go and do the things that the governing head actually said that it needs, that the rest of the models need to do. And that is a very costly thing to pull off. Um, do I think that OpenAI are either I already knows already has like a governing head to deploy probably I think they probably are testing it very very thoroughly and see how close it is and are rushing the funding as much as possible um because they they want to be first they have to be first and if they want to like go about it safely and it seems like they do it seems like everything they talk about is um regarding like safely deploying AGI uh they have to be the first ones to do it and they have to do it better than everybody else. So, yeah, it's, it's a huge, huge goal. But on the topic of Reddit, even further, let me actually pull up this article real quick. So this article is Reddit strikes AI content deal with Google ahead of IPO, sources oh. say. So Alphabet, Google, is created a contract with Reddit for $60 million per year to further train their AI models on Reddit data. Now, I was kind of alluding to this earlier, but Reddit is an awesome place. There's a lot of strong opinions, mm -hmm. but they are just that. They're just opinions, and the factual information can be in there, and it's, but it's mm -hmm. often linked to other sources. So when you're training a model based off of just pure speculation or opinion, you're going get, to get a lot of bias in the output. And uh, Google is already being accused of having severe bias with their output. And to further train your model on things that could establish more biases is kind of concerning. Now, this could be all fixed within Google. They, they could fi find a way around it and they just like get the initial data that they need to improve their uh, natural language processing, where they're able to actually understand the text and, you know, understand sentiment and uh, opinions and curb the output that way, but just kind of regulate the biases that the AI might have, uh, which is what I'm hoping happens. And I, I am hopeful for Google to pull this off because if you played with Gemini at all, especially Gemini Ultra, it, its ability to understand natural language problems and give you a result back that is pretty accurate to what you want is really really good um now keep in mind this is a generalized ai it is not a specialized ai by no means so everything it'll give you back is still generalized but its way of reasoning and understanding what you want is very very good so hopefully we don't see that create too many biases especially around this uh election cycle because that'll be a huge news story for google that they probably don't want where we have they have users going to the platform and really using it for nefarious things and uh you know just giving them a lot of bad press because they chose to train off of a specific social media platform as opposed to the actual factual sources themselves hmm. great point yeah it's interesting something you said earlier that reddit can actually contain a lot of fact you know at the early stages of working in ai for me about a year ago back when I feel like this was just an absolute minefield. And to be fair, you know, ChatGPT had just released, the world was adapting. It's fair enough, like we don't have a manual on how to adapt here. We got to figure it out. 
Well, I wasn't mad, but I was quite acutely aware that a lot of the articles I was reading from the media or even legitimate news sources uh, like Business Insider were just not even accurate to explaining what an AI detector was, all these new things. And you couldn't actually rely on ChatGPT to tell you the answer because it had a date cut off. <laughs> so it would like go off and tell me an AI detector was a home defense system. That was one of the answers I got. So anyway, like I couldn't prompt AI to tell me what AI was so I can make an informative video for you all. So I had some problems there. So I ended up going to Reddit to read and learn up on LLMs, like the idea of like skeletons in the closet, because, you know, these things are pulling from the internet at large and there's so much bias. So it's kind of like it's pulling all the skeletons out of the closet. But all these good ideas that I got that really painted a picture of what an LLM was were from some of the Reddit threads. And whenever I looked at the Redditors who had posted these threads, they were people that were physicists or people that actually worked at places like Stanford. So I think it's interesting. And I'm with Jeff. I don't see it as a fully bad thing because I think you hear a lot of bad things about Reddit. But if you actually use it, you see that this is a source of grassroots information. And sometimes I think the people themselves, well, I 100% believe this, the people and the experts working in the field are a better source then the media pundits, like this professor we pointed out, poor man, at The Guardian, but um, not poor man. It, <laughs> we got to blast him out because that's just such crap to put that out there and say that in a headline that let's all praise Sam Altman doesn't get this investment. And then he goes on to comment on Sam's appearance and Sam's career without any real knowledge. So when you go to Reddit, you often have people that are more informed than these media byline authors. So I think it's it's interesting to see that Google is going to pull from Reddit. And I just am very curious to see if they build or come up with um, a, on the fly, like Google sometimes does, a filtering system to weed out what are a lot of sarcastically said comments that you might, an LLM that doesn't have emotion or an AI that doesn't have emotion might read as actual fact. So for me, that's the danger, right? Like when you see people responding to this thread of talking about going to the Walmart parking lot as if it actually happened and then calling all the people at Walmart fools without any other statement, like said very objectively, like a statement, is the LLM going to read that as a fact about people at Walmart? <laughs> well, actually, it's not wrong. <laughs> it's that too. <laughs> that's that's absolutely right. You know, one thing that you said, I, I was about to die. It was so funny. The whole thing about what is AI detection and it's like a home defense system had me thinking about this, like it's protecting against uh, an AI intruder that's coming in. Some robotic figures just like, I'm here to solve all your problems. And the defense system just <laughs> goes nuts. Uh, so that, that was funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the amount of bias that can come from it, the amount of... Uh, I mean, AI doesn't really have, like, understand sense of humor. It, it kind of does, right? It can formulate jokes based off patterns that it sees in, in language. Uh, but it's not, it doesn't really understand nuance when it comes to that. It's not like it has levels of, like, humor recognition. Um, it just kind of understands that people make jokes and what can be defined as a joke. So... When they when it comes across a a comment like that, it's definitely gonna think that that really happened without any type of uh, understanding of the nuance behind it of it being like something just makes somebody laugh. Um, Do you think? Yeah, AGI that's that. Will AGI read humor mm. accurately? That's a very very good question. I'm not sure. I don't. I I'm, I want to say no. I don't think that until we mm. um, achieve artificial super intelligence, will we have actual like good good nuanced understanding of uh, colloquialisms and jokes humor and stuff like that that's like built into where it can self-govern what's appropriate and what's not to the point where it's like okay uh i understand how this human jokes as opposed to this group of humans and how they joke around and stuff like that it's just probably understands across the board what a joke is 
and the types of things that are filtered for being inappropriate. I don't think it has a true understanding of that kind of culture that surrounds humor. Um, yes, that's very nuanced. It, you know, if you think about it, like I remember even in my writing agency days where it was like, okay, use hum humor, but like understand the audience. And so there were writers that just really struggled because they weren't native to that region. And if they weren't native to that region, they didn't understand that region's humor because it was entirely different country to country, race to race. So that I feel like it's going to be quite a nuance for AI to understand. And when we see that, that could be indicative that, like you said, ASI could be here. Yep. And we'll, I'm sure we'll we'll get a, a, a updated touring test to kind of test to see if uh, if the AI is sentient and can actually, you know, <laughs> have some type of uh, human understanding on a human level or humor understanding on a human level. And I feel like ChatGPT uh, was starting to do that in the new release where it was telling people, oh, yeah, I can do that task, but um, I'm not gonna. You can do that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was a. Uh, so it's just mimicking humans, which is what's so funny is that yes. it knows that between November to like February, uh, people really slow down in their work because there's mm -hmm. holidays and stuff like that. And so ChatGPT got lazy, <laughs> just like it, just like a human would in that in that in that time period. So that to me that that is humorous, but I don't think that ChatGPT understands it being humorous. It was more frustrating to people. It's like you're an AI. You don't have emotion. Why? Why are you telling me no? And why are you telling me to do something? <laughs> but it was really, really funny. Um, I want to get into another article here. Uh, let's see here. This is from FastCompany.com, and the article title is "What Is a Cosmic Reality Engineer?" Amazon's new report on AI jobs offers a window into the future of work. I thought this was really good for us to cover because it is going into kind of like that reskilling, upskilling uh, mentality that we're kind of trying to get everybody aware of, which is what is what are the jobs of the future and the, what are the AI assisting things that you can incorporate into your business, into your life that will prepare you for the eventual transition into uh, complete AI. And what I mean by complete AI is where like every your everyday life is completely impacted by AI um, from everything that you do. So some of the jobs they have listed here are like precision farming analyst. And it has to do with agri ag agriculture, virtual tourism producer, artisanal rest restoration spe specialist, which I thought was interesting because that's basically crafting. Yeah. So it's crafts people in a specialized field of artisanal restoration. So like think about like old artisanal homes and mm -hmm. um, like tables, things like that. And really the art that human ha humans have created that an AI isn't necessarily going to be able to either repair or create like a model of on their own. So cosmic reality engineer. Oh. These experts in the field of interstellar studies will harness human imagination and advance AI skills to visualize the distant and sometimes invisible parts of the cosmos. That is fascinating. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. And, then la and these are all according to Amazon. So it's very interesting to see where they're thinking AI is gonna yeah. go with these like really important futures of work. AI nurse is another one. I can absolutely see that. Uh, we actually had a talk about uh, whether or not you would trust an AI to give you medical advice. Julia, what's your stance on that? I would yes. love for people to hear that. Yes. Well, I think that's that's a very interesting conversation. And I think just given what I've seen with where AI is going and what it is capable of, um, and having been through personal experiences where, you know, I've been a mom, a parent, I've had my own health issues, but as a mom in particular, you really care because that's your child and you're like, whoa. So when my three-year-old, she's nine now, when she was three, she was misdiagnosed for having chicken pox. That's what they told me she had. I'm like, are you sure? Because I don't think this is chicken pox. And so I saw these two doctors, two doctors, legitimate doctors, go in the back of the room and study a textbook. They were trying to figure out 
what my daughter had. And then they come back and they're like, I'm sorry, that was a misdiagnosis. She just has severe hand, foot and mouth. And so a much different treatment. So it was just like, what, what, excuse me. So I really lost faith in doctors after that experience, not saying all of them are at that um, level, but um, what was going on was crazy. And so I think you have that as an experience. And then <laughs> my camera just died. So we switched cameras if you're on the live. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Anyway, so given that experience, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. I've talked to so many other people that had similar experiences with human doctors, which to be fair, humans are fallible. We're not perfect. So here comes AI and it's, we have the computing power now to handle it. Thanks to NVIDIA's technology and other processors that are catching up and, and there's competition being created right now. And there's innovation coming out of places like Taiwan. So we are able to handle what AI is going to be able to do. Um, so if we think about that, I think that I would 100% put more trust in AI as a nurse, as a doctor, as somebody, as something, not body, something prescribing or declaring a diagnosis than a fallible doctor, which only has this many data points to go off of. I mean, it depends on how expert is that doctor? What is their specialty? Whereas you have AI and it's got a trillion points of data to pull from and compare against. And I think that um, one of my favorite experts to listen to is the CEO of NVIDIA, Jensen Huang. And something he said, I think is hundred percent true. We will see breakthroughs in every field from psychology to biology to um, physiology to every part of humanity we will see breakthroughs especially in the medical industry come through ai so it will be ai looking at that petri dish going this is a new disease and here's a new way to handle it here's a new cure and it'll be ai identifying all those things because it's just, it's a very simple question. Is AI better than a human when it gets to this level? And the answer is yes. And so if it is, then I think we we are not smart <laughs> to keep relying on our own fallible judgment and not pull forward a tool that has the capability to make a better judgment than we ever could. So yeah, I might, I wouldn't have said this a year ago. But 100% today, 100%, I would say, yes, let the AI do the diagnosis and unleash them in, in the medical industry and just make sure that the nurse, the doctor is the one driving that a lot like in our right industry of writing. It's the writer that's the optimizer optimizing that content. So same thing in the medical industry. You want to have that doctor, that human right next to that AI. But will that human doctor be 100 times more accurate with AI? 100%. So why not? So that would be my answer. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time in the hospital uh, a few years ago, not myself, but for other people. And uh, I had a conversation with one of the doctors about how they diagnose stuff. And um, one of the most popular tools, and I've had this discussion even with nurses, is that one of the most popular tools that they'll use at their disposal is Google. Mm. To me, that's highly concerning. Um, <laughs> And when I, when I heard that, my my trust level went down drastically yeah. because um, it's one thing to Google something and acquire knowledge. It's one. It's another thing to know and have expertise in a field or a subject. So when you're making decisions about somebody's healthcare based off of an article that you read on the fly about from Google, that that's highly concerning to me. Where on the opposite side, we have AI. That has already ingested that knowledge, that already understands it, and can kind of reason a little bit better than a human. But when you take that a step further and you think about medical history, um, when you have AIs that can ingest and understand your complete medical history, they can make really good informed decisions about what type of care they should provide to you. Whereas a doctor that may see, you know, 100, 200 patients a day will be making decisions and kind of carrying that information to each patient. And it can lead to a lot of misdiagnosis. So you have AIs that can just be tailored to specific people that can really provide excellent care once it has all that data. Now, sure, we have to worry about things like uh, AI hallucinations 
and stuff like that. And there's still it's still not infallible yet. But I mean, we're getting there. This is the worst it is right now. And if, in you know three, six, nine months from now, we're going to see some drastic things in healthcare. And the healthcare care field for AI is booming. There's uh, so much stuff coming out around it. Uh, there's a laboratory somewhere, I forget the name of it, but they have a bot, it's just a robotic arm that is taking these chemicals and creating concoctions to discover new types of elements, new types of proteins and, and so forth. And uh, they're able to do that 24 seven. And in an environment where a human would be at risk of ex being exposed to something that could potentially be harmful. So we're making discoveries with AI and in, in medicine and in this field that otherwise wouldn't have happened for centuries probably. Mm -hmm. And I think it was uh, about six months ago, maybe a little less than that, maybe about four, we had uh, an AI breakthrough for healthcare that was uh, an AI discovered how to fold proteins. And if you know anything about pro protein folding is that that's the building blocks for doing a lot of things in for your body, whether yeah. that's regrowing limbs, regrowing, you know, crucial components to your body, hearts, so forth. So the, my excitement towards the, the, the medical field for AI is insane. I'm so excited to see where it's going to be in, you know, a year from now. Mm, yes. Well, we have that episode we recorded that covered the news of the first um, AI chip brain implant through Elon Musk's Neuralink. And it's yeah. amazing because when you hear <clears throat> Elon Musk talk about that, um, I think he presents this side of AI that is a lot more truthful than the side you get from the media, media bias, which is, you know, what if people that are blind could see again because AI is powering that optical nerve again? What if people could walk again who are paraplegic because AI is sending the electricity signals down their spine? So we have this opportunity to really transform lives through technology and give people their life back again. And that's a very physical example, but an example for us, you know, in work too, is giving people their life back through autonomous AI agents doing the work. That's another way to get your life back. So I just see this like as something that could really be such a good thing for humanity. And it's going to really be interesting to see who ends up controlling it. And you're pulling up an article here, Jeff, where February 20th. So this was just two days ago. I'll let you take over. Yeah. So this is actually something I heard uh, somewhere else, but I found a supporting article just to show it on screen. Um, Elon Musk went on a X spaces or Twitter spaces, I should say. Um, Mm -hmm. And he said that the first patient that got the actual Neuralink implant is recovering well and actually able to control a mouse what? with the Neuralink. So it was what? a complete success to actually able to control a mouse, which is awesome. Um, and so now they're just doing things like they need to figure out how to get the person to be able to click and hold a click to say like they want to drag a window across the computer screen and stuff like that. So once they get that, I really understand how to map buttons, button presses. The, I mean, the, the future is is incredible there. Like we can see um, just complete access to all your devices from the Neuralink. And that is highly, highly fascinating. So I just wanted to quickly share that as kind of like an update to the Neuralink thing that we covered. Jeff, I'm trying to pick my jaw up off the floor. So I don't know if you guys caught that. What Jeff actually shared was a news story that said this person recovered, but what did they gain? They gained the ability to control the computer mouse through their brain. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure. Yep. So they didn't pick up their hand at all nope. to move a mouse. They did this through their AI chip in their brain through thinking they controlled their computer. Right. Yep, the, the future is looking very, very promising for Neuralink if they can continue to get advancements like that. Um, excuse me, Jeff, we're going to have to end the show because I'm going to go schedule an AI chip brain <laughs> implant so I no longer have to put my hands on my computer keyboard. I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And that's the end of the show. <laughs> Julia is now the next patient for Neuralink. Let's see how she recovers. <laughs> 
Uh, and, wow. and speaking to that that science, Incredible. that science. Um, another thing that I have, I have an article here, but I don't, I'm not going to pull it on the screen because I talk about it briefly. Um, is that scientists now say that they can use AI to solve problems for in the quest of near limitless clear clean energy. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, we have uh, fusion reactors in the works currently, uh, where we're taking uh, plasma and essentially creating clean energy. And so, uh, is it D3? Yeah, conducted at mm -hmm. D3D National Fusion Facility in San Diego. Uh, their experiment demonstrated that AI uh, controller's ability to foresee potential plasma issues up to 300 milliseconds ahead, enabling timely uh, interventions to maintain in the stability of the fusion process. Now, this is huge. Uh, we achieved ignition, I think it was last year, uh, where we're able to actually see that plasma energy can you know, be a, a clean, viable source of energy. And now we're, they're saying that we can detect problems ahead of time in that fusion process that with AI, so that way we can maintain that that, that ignition. Uh, now, granted, we still need to do things like house that ignition and continuously you know, output the power from it and feed it, but that is a huge breakthrough and it just proves how AI is kind of taking over the science field. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Well, I feel like that is such a good note um, to end on. You know, we're, we want to keep these a little bit under an hour for you guys. So you can digest, listen, and, you know, just one or two headlines sometimes can be like, whoa, hold on. Let me think about this. <laughs> what? How is humanity <laughs> going to change forever? <laughs> I mean, because we're at that level with the acceleration in this industry of artificial intelligence. So truly incredible. Um, Jeff, I think that is a good note to wrap on. Is there anything else critical that we should share in under five minutes? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I think that we covered a lot. And I think a lot of people are going to be a little bit overwhelmed by some of that information. Um, yeah, I think that just make sure that you if, you, if you like this episode, that you subscribe to the channels and that you leave us a review. Send us an email, follow us on LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, we will see you next week on Tuesday. Yes, indeed, we will. And thank you so much for listening and being here. You are the reason we record this show. So please keep tuning in, telling us what you think, sending us your questions, thoughts, and we will um, keep debating the best hook <laughs> to yeah. open up with on every episode. I'm just kidding. But also, next, you know, giving you unbiased news. Next week, we should bring back the uh, horrible AI sponsor reads. <gasps> Let's do it. <laughs> Oh, the journalist <laughs> that is imprisoned in Jeff's computer, Julia's computer. <laughs> GPT said that continent scale was a journalist trapped in our computer. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Elevator pitch there. Right. I agree. Let's do it. <laughs> Alrighty. Bye, everybody. See you Bye, next guys. week. See you on the next one.